Do you have big goals that you want to accomplish, but you're always putting it off so it never gets done? Well, in today's video, I want to show you how to kill procrastination. So what's going on, guys? It's Josiah, your success strategist. And in today's video, I'm going to break down the top six ways for you to kill procrastination. Because if you never get over the disease of procrastination, you are never going to accomplish big goals. I can guarantee you of this. If you don't know how to be able to identify everything that is holding you back from reaching success is going to get the best of you. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Right now, we're going to hop into the top six ways for you to actually get past procrastination and for you to be able to reach your dreams, okay? So all of us on some level procrastinate. If you say that you never procrastinate, I think that you're a liar. But some of us are really bad when it comes to procrastinating, but maybe you don't even know why you procrastinate, right? Have you ever noticed that whenever you start something, you don't really finish it? Have you ever talked about a goal that you have, but for some reason or another, whenever it's time for you to do it, it always kind of gets pushed back to the back burner. You say that you got work. You say that you got school, you got family, you've got all these other responsibilities, right? <laughs> and everything is just that much more demanding and important than actually doing the one thing that's going to move your life forward. So I'm going to outline for you today in this video the top six reasons why that may be the case, why you may be taking the most important things in your life that could move your life forward, your family and your community, but for whatever reason, you kind of put it off to tomorrow. The first reason why people procrastinate, and this comes from a really great book that I've read on productivity. It's called The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey. I recommend that you guys check it out. It's definitely a uh, one of the better productivity books that I've read, super tactical. But I'm gonna give you one of the top points from that book in today's video. So. The first thing that you need to think about is what excites you and are you putting things off because it is super boring, okay? So that might be the first reason why you may procrastinate. I remember when I was in school, if there were certain subjects that bored me, which was 95% of the classes that I took in college, I would always wait until the very last minute to do my homework or to prepare for a large test, all because of the fact that I was not being stimulated by the material. And for a lot of you guys, you know, you're probably going to school, you're going to work, you're pursuing career opportunities that really don't stimulate you at all at the end of the day. You're just doing something to get a paycheck, just doing something to pay the bills, you're just going and taking a class because it's a part of your required curriculum you find yourself going through this narrative of life because where you're just doing something because somebody else has told you to do it. It's not because it's something that you actually want to do. And if you want to be able to kill procrastination, you need to start thinking about what actually drives you. What is your calling? Because when you can pursue a calling, that's when you can get yourself more motivated naturally to be able to get things done. This is something that people have called intrinsic motivation. See, there's a lot of people that will try to tell you what they think that you should be in your life. Remember that? You maybe you had a parent that told you, you know what, you should be a doctor. You should be a lawyer. You should be a dentist. You should be an engineer. But all of those career paths may not even be something that you actually care about. It just sounds good on paper. And so what you've got to do is you got to step away from what other people think is good for you. And you've got to do some soul searching within to find out, you know what, what really drives me? What's my motivator? What gets me up every single day ready to take on a new opportunity? When you look at guys like Warren Buffett, Buffett says, I get up every single day and I tap dance to work. Why? Because he's pursuing something that matters to him. He's driven by it. I wake up every single day excited to get on camera to do these videos. Why? Because I'm passionate 
about helping black men succeed. So you got to be able to find something that really motivates you. What's the second point? The second thing that you got to do is you got to be able to understand your pains. Okay. What are your pain points? Now, why are understanding your pain points important? Because we're always lovers of convention and comfort. Once you understand and identify that something is painful for you, you're going to try to avoid it as much as possible. So a lot of times, maybe you might be putting something off to the back burner because it's something that maybe you want to do, but it's kind of uncomfortable to do. It doesn't feel easy. It doesn't feel good. It feels like a lot of hard work. And instead of you just kind of, you know, picking yourself up by your bootstraps, trying to grind and hustle it out, the better thing for you to be able to do to be more productive is to identify, well, what parts of this process is actually painful and what parts of it do I actually enjoy? I'll give you an example. So when I run my business, Black Men's Career, trying to help black men all over the world become as successful as possible, there are certain things about running my business that I really like. I love being able to get on video and to be able to share all of this information with the world because I want to be able to help you become as successful as possible. But when it comes to doing the bookkeeping, uh, not my favorite activity. So what I like to do is I like to be able to take my record keeping and my accounting work and I outsource that to somebody else. I have people that are within my company right now that helps me send out emails, promote on social media, take care of video editing and all of the different nuances of running a business that you never really see on camera, but it happens behind closed doors and it's super important. But those are things that I myself personally am not so much suited to do. It's not so much that I can't do it, but if it's not something that I enjoy doing, why don't I find someone else that actually enjoys doing it and just hand it over to them, right? So what you want to do is don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Don't say, well, you know what? I don't want to start a business because every single facet of the business is something uh, that you don't like. What's better is to take to things that you do like, really understand that and hone in on that, and then find ways to be able to hire people into your company over time to be able to do the things that are a little bit more painful. So you gotta be able to understand your pain points. Now, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're working at a nine to five, maybe you're trying to identify your career path, no matter what it is that you do in life, this is super important. In order for you to be able to do things rapidly, effectively, with ease, identify all of the different discomfort uh, pain point areas in your life and ask yourself, how do I hand that over to somebody else or eliminate it altogether, okay? So that way you can move quickly with ease. Third thing that you need to be able to do, you need to be able to find your why. And I believe personally that this is arguably the most important step out of all of the six different ways to kill procrastination. If you don't have a why that's a driving force in your life to get things done, you will never be successful. And I know a lot of times people don't want to hear that and it's not something that I'm supposed to say, but I did not quit my job in corporate America to sugarcoat to you all of the foundational tools for success. If you're ever going to be successful in life, you've got to have a why, because I guarantee you, you are going to be met with rejections. You are going to be faced with obstacles. You are going to have to go through things in life that's not always going to feel good. Every single day in your life is not going to feel so good. You're not going to go through life with rose-colored glasses, feeling like everything is just, you know, a walk in the park. 
there's going to be challenges that you are going to have to face and overcome. No matter how much you do something that excites you, no matter how much you identify your pain points, you are going to have to go through obstacles, okay? And the only way that you can continually get past those obstacles every single day is if you have a why that is strong enough to get you past the hump, okay? So let's take an example. Let's say that you want to be able to have a six pack. Let's say that you want to be able to have a better body. You know, everybody in the world wants to be able to have a better physique and a better figure, but not everybody is willing to go through the process and the discipline and the sacrifices of being able to have a better figure, right? So maybe for you, that means that you got to be able to go to the gym. You got to be able to work out more often. Maybe you're not working out much at all right now. And now it's time for you to step it up in terms of, you know, your exercise routine. Maybe you're throwing in a little bit of cardio, but maybe you don't like running. Maybe it's time for you to lift weights. And guess what? You don't like feeling sore the next day. Well, if you have a why in your life that is a strong enough force, you could get past just about anything and still grin and bear it. You have to have a why that is so strong that no matter what type of obstacle or what type of um, dead end wall that life tries to throw at you, you're able to be able to get past it with ease. This is kind of one of the best ways that I want you to think about it. Let's imagine right now that you're at the top of a very large building. And you're overlooking another building that's on the opposite side of the building that you're already at. And the only connector from one building to another building is a tightrope, right? So here it is. You're all these, you know, hundreds of feet up in the air. And the only way to get from one building to another is by you getting to this tightrope. Now, any person with common sense would never hop on a tightrope to be able to get from one building to the next, right? Chances are you don't want to be able to get to the building that bad. You want to be able to save your life. But what if I told you that your closest companions and loved ones are in this opposite building? The building is about to explode. It's already burning down. And the only way that you can save their life is if you make it to the other side and get to that building. Would you be more motivated to be able to get to that other side of the building? Would you think a little bit more closely about walking that tightrope? Chances are, if you actually love the person that's in that other building very deeply in your heart, chances are it's something that you would consider. Even though you thought just two seconds ago that you would never walk a tightrope, no matter what the case may be. That all has to do with finding your why. When your why is big enough, you will figure out a way to make things happen. When your why is deep enough, you are willing to go through lengths far beyond yourself. It's bigger than you to be able to get something accomplished. And that's what I really want you to think about and examine when it comes to your goal. See, it's not enough for you to just say, you know what? I want to make a million dollars. I want to have my own business. I want to be able to travel the world. I want to be able to have a nice car. I want to be able to have a nice family. Everybody wants that out of life. But the question is, do you have a why that is actually going to motivate you every single day in order to get there. If you are only trying to pursue something for superficial reasons, I'm gonna tell you, man, you're never gonna get there because the road to success is so hard that if you are not relentlessly focused and driven by something that's greater than yourself, you're never gonna be able to make it happen. When I created this channel of Black Men's Career and I started my company five years ago, I had a dream that there was a black man that was on his way to jail. And he was hopeless in life. 
he grew up in a similar background as I did, never feeling like he had a mentor, never really having someone that was able to take him by the hand and show him how to be able to get things done. And he was ready to just give up. And then I imagine this black man having the opportunity for one time in his life to be able to actually sit down and watch someone that came from the same background as him, that's able to show him how to be successful, how to be able to break the cycle, how to be able to have meaning and fulfillment and leave a legacy. And that driving force in my life, that one dream, it's been the motivating force that's been having me come out with video after video, day after day to run my business now for a number of years. Y'all don't see, man, running a business is hard work. All you see is this video, but you never see any of the takes that I have to do to actually say the right words in the video so that way I'm not just talking over myself. <laughs> that way I'm not just slurring in my speech. That way I'm not having all of these technical glitches and errors. Everything that you're going to do is going to have a certain level of difficulty to it. Anything that's worth fighting for in this life is going to be a challenge, okay? Because if it was easy, everybody would do it. Everybody would be a business owner. Everybody would make a lot of money. So if you're going to be one of the chosen few to be able to get things done, guess what? You got to be able to identify your why. Number four. This might be one of the most painful points, but you know it's 100% true, so I gotta give you the truth. Are you organized? Because if you are not organized, chances are your life is in so much disarray, you don't even wanna attempt to try to start on something because you just got everything all over the place. Life is in shambles. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever, um, you know, maybe come home or you went to work, you had all of these papers and all of these places, you knew that you need to get things organized, you knew that you needed to get things arranged, but it felt like so much work to get yourself organized that you never actually took the time to be able to even start the first thing on your road to success. You ever felt like that? You ever had so many things to do? that, you know, <laughs> you're so daunted and so overwhelmed, you don't even begin just one thing off the list because you're like, what's the point? If I got to do a hundred different things, I'm going to just go take a nap. I'm going to just go do something else. I'm not even going to attempt it. All of that happens in our lives when we feel overwhelmed, largely because of the fact that we are unorganized. So if you want to become successful and you want to become more productive and kill procrastination, organization is key. Let me write this down, okay? Are you organized? I'm telling you all this. When I actually um, made a point of organizing my life, it worked wonders for me. You would be surprised how much more you can get done in a day when you are operating off of a proven system. And that's the reason why next week, actually, if you're watching this video on time, if you get to it too late, I'm sorry. Hopefully, maybe one day I'll give you another opportunity. I'm going to be hosting a live masterclass next Thursday where I'm actually going to be showing you step-by-step -step my daily time management system. It's allowed me to become a best-selling author. I've paid off over $95,000 in debt, all on the strength of having an organized system. See, a lot of you guys, because of the fact that you're not very organized, even if you think you are on some level, because of the fact that you are not super organized, everything that you do in your life becomes 10 times harder. So give you a basic example. Imagine right now that you need to be able to leave the house and you've got a meeting to go to. But you can't even get outside of your front door because you can't find the keys to the car. You can't find the keys to the car because you throw your car keys anywhere in the house, clothes are all over the place, you have no system of organization to say, put things here, 
put things there, right? You don't have no spare keys. If you do have a spare key, the spare key is just as lost and disorganized as your current set of keys. Everything is just in shambles all over the place. Because of the fact that you have no system of organization, it is undermining your performance. Something that could be easy to do and brainless has now become a complexity all because you don't have a basic system of structure to get things done. And many of you, you understand the example that I gave you on that low level, but then when it comes to other things in your life, you don't realize that you've fallen victim to that exact same issue. There's a lot of things in your life right now that you are overcomplicating simply because of the fact that you are unorganized and you've never been showed how to be able to systematize things, how to be able to structure things. And structure is the nature of every major business in America. <laughs> you go into any large corporation, you better know that they're structured. And that's the reason why they have become very successful. So when you are unorganized, guess what? You find yourself at a disadvantage in life. So if you want to know how I've gone about structuring my day-to-day -day in a way that's allowed me to be a business owner, a church leader, a real estate investor, a best-selling author, an executive board member uh, for a nonprofit organization, if you want to be able to know how I've been able to accomplish all of these things in one person before I even turn 30, I highly suggest that you get into this masterclass because this is actually the first time ever that I'm going to be sharing this publicly. I've never shared this with the world before. Um, it's been one of my competitive advantages in business. So it's not something that I've disclosed in the public eye. All right. So I'll put the link to that below. If you're interested in getting in, make sure that you actually take some time to get into it right now because the doors are going to close to be able to get in um, tomorrow night. So make sure that you get in right now. All right. But that's just kind of a quick aside. The fifth part that I want to give to you before we shut down this video. Are you fulfilled? Are you fulfilled in what you are doing? Or are you chasing after something that doesn't really matter? Okay. Let me write that down. If you are not fulfilled and you're just checking the box on something every single day, you're never going to have top performance at it. If what you're doing um, really has no significance to you, if you are not extremely driven by it, it's just not going to happen. And I, you know, I've talked to that at length about that in some of the other previous points, so I'm not going to belabor it here. But there's so much um, energy that comes through just being fulfilled, right? It, it, there's a quote that they have in society that says, where attention goes, energy flows. So if you're dedicating yourself to something that really doesn't keep your attention, you're not going to dedicate a lot of energy towards it. We become good at the things that we spend uh, most of our time doing. We become good at things that we do the most, okay? So what you need to start thinking about is, well, you know what? What are the things that I like to do the most? How do I actually build a career around those things? Because if you find yourself spending a lot of time naturally doing it, chances are it will come to you with more ease um, in you starting up a business or you doing whatever in your career to pursue that passion. So for me, if I have a natural knack when it comes to public speaking, it's not a big deal for me to get on this video and speak at length about these six points. But if you're someone that's like extremely reserved, super secluded, then this is going to be like hell for you, <laughs> right? People have a bigger fear of public speaking than they have of death itself. But I just happen to be one of those people where I could talk at length about things uh, that I'm passionate about. I could talk about this in my sleep. So it's really about finding what fulfills you, what things you could do, even if a person wasn't paying you for it, and actually making a career path out of that. Because if you could do it in your sleep, then guess what? It's not going to really feel like work once you do it 
um, in your business or in your career path. Six and final point. Are you rewarding yourself? Okay. Are you rewarding you? Why is this important? Because a lot of times, you know, we like to get into this hustle mentality. Hustle is the new sexy. And we just try to pound it, pound it, pound it, pound it every single day of our life. You're never going to be able to sustain that type of a lifestyle because you are eventually going to burn out. I can tell you this from personal experience. You're going to find yourself a lot more motivated to be able to get big things done if you place rewards that you enjoy out of life on the other side of hard work, okay? Now, so this might sound a little bit counterproductive to some of you, but for some of you guys, like if you're trying to be able to, you know, uh, have a fitness goal, you might have to start getting rid of certain foods in the house, but then what you need to do is say, you know what, once I've achieved this milestone, that's when I'm going to have this cheat meal. Take your favorite food. Take the favorite thing that you like to gorge yourself with, take it out of your house, and then once you set a goal to say, when I accomplish this goal, I'm going to go out and I'm going to have this in whatever type of amount that makes me feel good. Even though that might seem counterproductive <laughs> to why you just reached this fitness goal in the first place, you need to be able to align your work with a reward. Even when you look at a lot of fitness guys, they have certain cheat days. And you gotta be able to know and understand the importance of how a reward can actually push you further, right? It's just like kids. Remember if you wanna be able to, if you got a kid and you wanna be able to motivate them to get something done, don't you reward them with ice cream? Don't you, you know, say, okay, well, if you do this, I'll give you some pizza. If you do this, I'll take you to the movies. If you do this, I'll take you to Chunky e. Cheese, right? Humans are driven by rewards. And a lot of us don't try to accomplish big things because we're not getting any rewards up front to actually keep us motivated to move forward every single day. So what you may have to do for yourself is have certain reward checkpoints. As you work on something, set up little checkpoints for yourself where when you reach one milestone, then you get a reward. And then you keep working hard and then you give yourself another reward from checkpoint to checkpoint to checkpoint. Most people will never tell you this because most people are just giving you cliches. They're not going to be kicking you game about every single thing that's necessary for success because if you give somebody all the tricks to the trade, they're going to be worried that you're going to outperform them, right? But the world is big enough for us all to win. That's the reason why I'm giving you all of these different strategies. And that's the reason why I even give you this free empire builder that shows you how to be able to take your life right now and be able to build your empire from scratch, step by step. Life is too short for you to just go through the motions. So if you wanna be able to continue to press things forward, you've got to be able to kill procrastination. Watch this video over and over and over again until you get it right in your life, and I guarantee you this is going to be one of the most valuable investments of your time. Like I said again, I'm doing a live masterclass next Thursday where I'm actually going to be showing you live how I go about structuring my day. This has allowed me to accomplish great things between, again, be, having my own company, retiring from corporate America, being on the executive board of a nonprofit, being a church leader, traveling the world. Oftentimes people ask me, how do I get so much done in a day? And it's only because of my system. It's only because of my tools. It's not because of the fact that I'm from some different planet. It's not because I'm breathing some different type of air. It's about the system that I put in place that really does a lot of the work for me, okay? So I appreciate you so much for taking the time to invest in yourself. 
I'm putting links below so that way you can make the most of seizing these opportunities that I told you about in today's video. Please don't forget to subscribe. Share this video with a friend and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Take care.